Hi, my name is Tom Hipwell and I'm from Bulb. Bulb is a renewable energy supplier. It was the fastest growing startup in the UK in 2018 and 2019, and it's recently started to expand internationally to France, Spain and Texas. As part of my day to day, I've been building the energy billing system which Bulb uses internationally. That system uses the microservices architecture, and each service is a Flask app that is dockerized and deployed to Kubernetes. I'm here to talk today about a pattern we use at Bulb where we use SOPs, Cube Secrets, and a CI pipeline for secure configuration deployment. This is something I think you can learn in five minutes and immediately take home and apply in your own stack, hopefully improving the reliability of configuration changes and keeping all our configuration more secure. If you want to get in touch with me after the presentation, you can find me on Twitter or LinkedIn, and my email is tom at bob.com. So what is SOPs anyway? SOPs is a tool written by Mozilla to handle the editing of encrypted files. It only encrypts the values of a YAML or JSON file and not the keys. It uses an envelope encryption model where the backend is a key management service or KMS provided by AWS, Azure or TCP. And that KMS is used to store a master key, which when fetched is used to encrypt or decrypt your configuration. One advantage of this pattern is that you can store the encrypted file alongside your code. This means you can check in and deploy your configuration using your CI pipeline. You can also have code review for configuration changes. As only the values are encrypted, diffs are meaningful, and you can see exactly which keys change as part of a commit. Conflicts are also easier to resolve. As long as the same values are not edited, changes can be easily merged. There's a handy little CLI, which means that using SOPs easily plugs into your developer workflow. You can also control the access to the encrypted configuration by adding or removing roles to the user in the cloud. The tool is also open source and released under the Mozilla public license. So why would I use it? Well, using Vault or similar for secret management in our industry is the best practice. You can see these services, you can use these services to find access to service accounts using IAM roles. This means that the actual credentials can be ephemeral. They can expire on a lease and they never need to be managed or stored. Based on the role that you have, you can go to the secrets manager and request a service account that you need, rather than having to generate and store that service account somewhere. Because the service accounts are not stored anywhere, you as a software engineer never need access directly to that account keeping everything nice and secure. The downside of this approach is that it can be complex and expensive to manage and might not be needed at smaller firms or for projects earlier in their gestation. However, in this scenario, you still want to secure your configuration from day zero and you want an automated and reliable way of deploying that configuration. That's where this pattern using SOPs comes in. Okay, how do you use it? Once you set up and as a side note, you can install SOPs using a package manager like Homebrew. Then you can encrypt and decrypt files using the SOPs command, as shown on the slide. Handily, you can set SOPs to decrypt mode using the dash D flag and then pipe it over standard in to keep apply. So to create .m style secrets containing key value pairs, we do something like the command on screen. This can be run anywhere the SOPs and the Capex or CLI are installed. As long as we're authenticated to our cloud key MS to get access to the master key to decrypt the file. This means you can run this command as a build step in your CI. As mentioned at the start of the presentation, you can store the configuration in the same repo as your application code using namespace subdirectories for each environment that you're working with, as shown on the slide here. Finally, just add a .sops file on the root of your secrets directory in your repo specifying the KMS configuration for each sub-environment that you need to work in. Remember, you can permission these keys separately for different environments if you want to, say, unblock your devs and test environments, but keep prod completely locked down. And that's it. Hopefully you've seen how easy it is to get up and running, and I'll hear from you shortly about how you've got the setup at home. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference, and thank you so much for taking the time to watch my presentation today.